Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer. Welcome to Medicine Matters. The topic, highlights from ACIP's new adult schedule for 2023, published in the Annals of Internal Medicine, and why this new schedule may be a collector's item. Here's why it matters. It's a new year, which means a new ACIP adult immunization schedule, a valuable resource collating ACIP's most up-to-date vaccination recommendations. The schedule's organization remains the same. It still has four sections, Table 1, Vaccinations by Age, Table 2, Vaccinations by Medical Conditions and Other Indications, the Notes section, alphabetically ordered with vaccine-specific details, and also an appendix list of vaccine-specific contraindications and precautions. But what's unique about this year is some of the revisions have historical implications. The first change is really no big surprise in light of what we've gone through the last few years. COVID vaccines are listed first on the cover page by brand name for those authorized and by company name for those still under EUA, emergency use authorization. They're also listed first on the graphics and first in the notes. COVID mRNA and protein-based vaccines have now been assigned official abbreviations based on vaccine platform and valency. What's also remarkable is the absence of COVID viral vector vaccines on that list. However, Janssen's viral vector COVID vaccine, which has been available but is not preferred, does have a CDC website link in the notes section. Also of historical significance and which may set a precedent is the inclusion of products which are not vaccines. The value of COVID pre-exposure prophylaxis with products including monoclonal antibodies like Evisheld for those moderately or severely immunocompromised are mentioned in the notes section. A sad addition is a necessary inclusion triggered by recent polio cases in New York. Polio was thought to be eradicated. Polio vaccine is one we thought adults would no longer continue to need to get. But now polio vaccines listed on the schedule's cover page. It's not on the tables, but current vaccination recommendations are now in the notes. And for the first time ever, the schedule has been approved by the American Pharmacists Association, which validates pharmacists as established partners in vaccine administration. One aspect of the schedule that has not changed is the schedule's color code key. Yellow means it's recommended it meets age requirement. Purple means indicated for those with additional risk factors or other indications. Blue means recommended based on shared clinical decision making. Orange is for precaution. Red means contraindicated or not recommended. Vaccine should not be administered. Overlays on the red more precisely clarify whether a vaccine is really contraindicated or just not recommended. An asterisk on red indicates to vaccinate after pregnancy if indicated. And finally, color code gray means there is no recommendation or not applicable. For Table 1, vaccinations by age, there's one major change. COVID vaccines are on the graphic on the first row with the need for both the primary series and boosters emphasized on the overlay. The notes have hyperlinked keys to the most up-to-date vaccination recommendations. Here are some other selected highlights from Table 1. For hepatitis B, for adults under 60, Hep B's color code is yellow, meaning it's indicated for all. But if you're 60 or older and you want it, you can have it, even if you don't have an additional risk indication. And yes, even though the bar is purple. How do I know? It's in the notes, so check it out. Pneumococcal vaccination is routinely recommended starting at age 65. Current recommendations for those not previously vaccinated have not changed since last year, but take a look at Table 1. The bottom half of the row for those 65 and older is now blue, and that's new. This new blue means shared clinical decision-making and applies to those previously considered fully vaccinated with the now extinct combination of PCV13, then PPSV23. These patients now have the option of getting a dose of PCV20 five years after completing their PCV13, then PPSV23 combo series. This option is blue because this decision is up to you and your patient. 
check the notes for more pneumococcal vaccination details, and there are many more of them. For example, for those partially vaccinated using lower valency vaccines, there's an option of substituting PCV20 for PPSV23 to broaden and increase durability of protection. Yes, these pneumococcal vaccination recommendation options are complicated, but more help is here. There's now a new pneumococcal vaccination app. The link to get the app is in the notes. Now for table two, vaccinations by medical condition or other indications. Other than a few minor word changes on the overlays, the only thing that's new is the COVID vaccine row. This table is helpful for matching vaccine recommendations with specific medical conditions, pregnancy, immunocompromising conditions, HIV with specifics according to CD4 count, asplenia, complement deficiencies, heart disease, lung disease, alcoholism, chronic liver disease, diabetes, healthcare personnel, and men who have sex with men. Use this table to dot the I's and cross the T's when it comes to vaccination recommendations. For example, take a look at the pregnancy column. Live virus vaccines, including LAIB, MMR, and varicella are contraindicated and color-coded red. MMR and varicella also have an asterisk, meaning vaccinate after pregnancy if indicated. As does the HPV vaccines, which is not a live virus vaccine, but its overlay says not recommended, but also with an asterisk meaning vaccinate after pregnancy. Next, let's look a little more closely at the notes. They're still in alphabetical order. Their organization, routine, special situations, and when indicated, shared clinical decision-making has not changed. They're concise, they're succinct, but sometimes they're not enough. That's why vaccine-specific links to more complete recommendations are so convenient. Notes for hepatitis B contain nuances on specific dosing for vaccinating patients on dialysis, as well as a reminder that newer Hep B vaccines like Heplosab and Prehepbrio are not recommended during pregnancy due to lack of safety data. For flu, everyone six months and older still needs yearly flu vaccination with an age and health appropriate flu vaccine. But for those 65 and older, the notes specify the three vaccine versions now preferred, high dose, recombinant, or adjuvanted versions. However, if these aren't available, it's better to get any flu vaccine than go without. For meningitis vaccines, the notes for men ACWY and men B are combined. For men B, trade names Vexero and Trumenba are specified because the products are not interchangeable. Booster intervals for those still at risk are different for each vaccine type. Every five years for men ACWY boosters and every two to three years for boosters of men B. The recent polio case in New York has put polio vaccination in the spotlight. ACIP has now reinstated its polio vaccine work group. The new schedule has polio vaccines listed on the cover page. Current recommendations have also been added to the notes. Additional routine vaccination for adults is not necessary, at least for now. However, for those at increased risk of exposure to polio, they fall into the special situation category. For those at increased risk who completed a polio vaccine series, a single lifetime IPV booster can be given. For those at increased risk who have not completed their polio vaccine series, now would be the time to finish that series. And don't forget, the final step in using the schedule, check the appendix and its list of vaccine-specific contraindications and precautions. I hope this review of the new ACIP adult immunization schedule has been helpful. Happy vaccinating. For Medicine Matters, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer.